I wanna take just the next few moments to just put a pin on, uh, or a fine point rather, on everything that's already been said this morning. I was going to read from Daniel 3 because in our series, The Struggle is Real, that I'm basically concluding today, one of the statements that we have been kind of repeating to each other, I've had people text this to me when they were going through situations, even recently, and the statement goes like this, faith says, or, or fear rather says, what if, faith says, even if. And that comes from Daniel chapter three where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are in danger of being thrown in the fiery furnace is a story that we teach our children and for a good reason. But they are in danger of being thrown in the fiery furnace and the, these, uh, uh, these believers respond to King Nebuchadnezzar by saying this and I'll just uh, read the last few scriptures here Daniel chapter 3 uh, he said in verse uh, 14 and 15 I hear you refuse to worship my gods this is King Nebuchadnezzar I'm going to give you another chance he says in verse 15 now if you go ahead and just go ahead and bow down and worship the statue and listen to the music everything will be all right doesn't that sound so much like our governor government these days just sit down, be quiet, do what we tell you to do and everything will be all right. How many of you have, your eyes have been opened up and you realize everything ain't going to be all right, amen? Everything isn't all right. In fact, very few things in our country right now are all right. We're facing a crisis at literally every level and I think a large part of it is because a whole generation of, of people have, have bowed that knee. They, they've gone along to get along and we are now at a pivotal point, a crisis point, a tipping point, if you will, that we can no longer allow to continue before we lose pretty much everything that we cherish and believe. I love the response of these three young Hebrew boys. Just bow down, everything will be all right and you will not pay the price of being thrown into the furnace for, for no God can save you. Their response, the three men replied, your majesty, we don't need to defend ourselves. The God we worship can save us from you and your flaming furnace. But even if he doesn't, we will not worship your gods. What a powerful truth. What a powerful truth that we need to be reminded of today. Last week I preached on the reality that we as Christians struggle to live in a fallen world. And I might just add to that today by saying that the world is more than fallen, it's broken, and it's more than broken. It is now in opposition to everything you and I cherish. It opposes everything that is good and is holy. And Jesus said this would happen. Jesus said in John 15, the world hates me and it hated God, my heavenly father, and therefore it hates you too because the world does not know me. They hated him so much they nailed him to a cross 2,000 years ago. No wonder the world despises Christianity today. No wonder the world is opposed to holy matrimony and the institution of the family and life in the womb. And the list could go on and on and on. Paul reminds us in Hebrew, or I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter six, that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against cosmic powers in this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Jimmy Scroggins, the guy that was on the screen a while ago, uh, said in his new book, The Education Reformation, that Western culture is barreling down the road of secularization at break, breakneck speed. 
and the moral vision that once sustained and even promoted Christian values that helped shape America have now been completely sidelined. The church, once the keeper of these shared values, has been also disapprovingly cast aside and our Judeo-Christian roots have been largely erased and the results are disastrous. That's where we're at. It's a state of disaster in the world in which we live. But there again, it was like that in the days of Daniel. It was like that in the days of Jesus. It was like that in the days of the early church. It's like that today. So what's, what's the solution to all of this? Why are we starting this Christian school? Why do we have a church here in the south side of Chicago? Why, why do we engage in this missional activity? It's simple. It's the simple, pure, and yet so powerful response of those three Hebrew boys. We worship the God of all heavens and all creation. We worship his son Jesus who came 2,000 years ago and gave his life on the cross to save the world that hates him so much. We are doing what we're doing because there is another whole entire generation of young people that the public schools have failed them, not only educationally, but spiritually as well. They have failed to teach them the basics of, of morality and kindness and compassion. And so we are doing what we are doing to push back against the the kingdoms of this world. We are doing this to push back against the darkness that is overwhelming the world in which we live. We are doing this because there's a God in heaven who commands us to love others and to help them find new life in Jesus, amen? That's why we're doing this. Those Hebrew boys could have gone along to get along. They could have stayed quiet. They could have just said, yes, sir, bowed the knee, and they could have lived the rest of their life in relative peace, but they responded with, we will not bow, and we will not worship your gods, and and even if our God doesn't deliver us, where is that kind of conviction in the world today? Even if things don't turn around, even if this world gets worse than it already is, we will not. Most of us live our lives as what if, in fear. What if things don't turn around? What if the world continues to get worse? Our position should be like those Hebrew boys, even if, even if, faith. Faith faces the future, not in fear, but in faith. We live as believers knowing that Jesus is coming again. And hey, he wrote the book and he, I've read the last chapter and we win, amen? We win. Despite the condition of the world, despite the future of this world and the world's kingdoms, we win. God wrote the book. God wrote eternity from past to future and he wins, amen? I don't know about you, but I've got family, I've got friends, I've got neighbors, people that I love dearly that need Jesus as well. So we do what we do for them. I close with this statement. David earlier read the Shema, It was what they taught young Hebrew children in the nation of Israel. They taught them this so that it would be a kind of a a fixture and an immovable cornerstone from which to build their faith and the rest of their lives. Christian education may not be the end all or the fix all, but I thank God that we've stepped and leaned into the challenge of giving our young people a cornerstone from which to begin. That's why we're launching Ashburn Christian Academy, to help continue to further the kingdom of God, to push back against the kingdom 
of darkness, to push back and reclaim the minds and the hearts of our young people, knowing that our investment in their lives will bless our children and their children and their children's children, all to the glory of God, amen.